Und wir können sprechen mit der Präsidentin des Europaparlaments, uh, Roberta Metzola. Thank you for joining us. We are talking about uh, weapons, uh, energy, but we have to talk about solidarity. Absolutely. Uh, if there was one word that has dominated this past month of uh, this war that has been unprovoked, uncalled for, and has led to the pointless loss of so many lives on our union, it has been the word solidarity. We have used that word in terms of making sure that we are united in our protection of our Ukrainian allies. We also need uh, to make sure that that solidarity is also continued between the member states in welcoming and protecting the millions of Ukrainian refugees in our countries. We have already seen our homes and our hearts open. We now have to make sure that that solidarity can be kept up at the same time that our consumers, our citizens are facing unprecedented um, high gas and electricity bills, already economically in a challenging time post-COVID. Imagine now that in a new crisis, the European Union needs to show solidarity more than ever. We must face a huge number of fugitives from Ukraine. Uh, we have Poland and we have the other countries. They are helping us. But uh, in terms of solidarity, we have to take them all over Europe. Uh, is there any plan? First of all, uh, let me pay tribute to those countries, both in the European Union and in the neighborhood, that have taken a really huge challenge uh, and opened up their borders for millions, in fact, as we see in Poland and in other countries, uh, joining and entering those, those countries uh, with open arms and open hearts. This is not a, 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 a situation that is going to be resolved soon. For so many hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians, there is nothing to return to. Their, their houses and towns have been razed to the ground in this completely futile and brutal uh, aggression and, uh, and invasion. This is why we need to be um, uh, open to look at what we have, what our rules are, uh, what laws are possible, what funds are available, and be either creative and more open, even if we would not have been able to do that two or three months ago. We are living a new reality, and I'm sure that this is what a number of governments will ask for tonight, to look at what we have, our arsenal, so to speak, what can be changed, what can't, and if it can't, why and why not. Looking back to 2015, uh, we have a reaction of uh, Chancellor Merkel, uh, which was uh, really um, emotion, human emotion, I think. But in the, in the following uh, month, we had a lot of problems around Europe. How to react now on uh, the number of fugitives? As you asked me in the previous question, do all member states, do all countries have to uh, chip in, have to shoulder that, uh, that responsibility? The same situation is today. What we've seen in the past, as you mentioned in 2015, but also earlier, that member states were tasked to carry that responsibility alone. Uh, frontline member states, but also new frontline member states. We remember, we recall even last, uh, last summer with the Baltic states having faced an influx from um, uh, through Belarus, another um, volatile and unpredictable and, 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 and violent um, regime in our immediate neighborhood. Now, what we need to do today is not repeat the mistakes in, in, in the past, because our citizens, our consumers, our people, Look at the fight for democracy. There is no price to be pay to place on, on democracy, on values, on fundamental rights. And that has to be complemented by our governments, us as political leaders, responsibility in order to protect also um, bills that cannot be paid, economic problems that cannot be uh, solved yet, but also things that need to be looked at pr properly in a society, in all member states, not one or two. Thank you very much. Thank you.